I'm E.G. Marshall, moderator of these mystic meanderings. As you must surely know by this time, certainly we remind you of that fact often enough, the detective story was invented by our own Edgar Allan Poe. For all the good it did him, Poe died virtually of starvation. Arthur Conan Doyle, an Englishman, took all of the principles laid down by Poe and proceeded to make a fortune with Sherlock Holmes. Whoever said life was fair, this irked Mark Twain no end. And so, determined to strike a blow for America, he wrote a satire to put Conan Doyle in his place. And in this battle between the titans, all of us are the winners, as you are about to hear. Inspector, I've been robbed. Of what? An elephant. And now a a white elephant. Well, uh, what do you want us to do? I want you to find him for me. Find an elephant on the streets of New York City and a white elephant at that? Well, I realize the difficulty. If you lost a dog or a cat or even a pet mouse, why I'd offer a reward. This will tax our resources to the utmost. With so many places of concealment, how does one find a stolen white elephant? Is this task beyond the powers of the New York City detective force? Sir, nothing is impossible for a New York detective. Our mystery drama, The Stolen White Elephant was adapted from the Mark Twain classic, especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Robert Dryden and Ian Martin. It is sponsored in part by Time Magazine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with that one. sworn deposes as follows. This curious history was related to me by a chance railroad acquaintance. He was a gentleman of more than 70 years of age, and his thoroughly good and gentle face and earnest and sincere manner imprinted the unmistakable stamp of truth upon every statement which fell from his lips. He said... Eighteen and uh, seven, eight, or was it uh, seven, seven? Oh, no, no matter. I was a major in Her Imperial Majesty's Bengal Lancers in India, you know. And one morning, uh, no, uh, I suppose it was at lunch, or it might have been in the evening. Uh, anyway, I was summoned by my commanding officer, Colonel Chumley Hogan Yale, or had he been recalled? Then is uh, well, it's no matter. As I say, I was summoned. Uh, sit down, Schmather. Sit. Uh, do you know where Siam is? Well, I suppose I might find it on the map, Colonel. Well, it seems that the king uh, kicked up no end of a row about the border or some such rot. Uh, yes, sir. A yeah, cheeky beggar. Well, he was treated to a whiff of rape shot. I can tell you that brought him to his senses. Eh, what? Quick enough? Uh, yes, sir. Well, as a sign of his gratitude. He intends to send Her Majesty a token of his esteem. Uh, yes, sir? An elephant. An elephant? A white elephant. Uh, uh, why a white elephant? It uh, uh, seems it's a sacred animal and all that sort yes, of thing. But whatever will the Queen do with the white elephant? Ours uh, not to reason why, Smathers. You are placed in command of the white elephant party. Mm, yes, sir. I must remind you that the fate of Her Majesty's Indian Empire is in your hands. Yes, sir. Therefore, you are to guard the beast with your life. It shall be done, sir. It's up to you, Smathers, to deliver this white elephant into the hands of the Queen. Into her hands? Smathers, England expects every man to do his duty. Well, sir, a ship was fitted out for me, and my servants and all officers were in attendance of the elephant. And together with the elephant, we sailed across the Pacific and landed at San Francisco. 
There a special train awaited us, and we crossed your great country, arriving a week later in the city of New York. En route, I had come to know my charge rather well. <laughs> we spent many happy hours together. <laughs> he was a, rather an intelligent elephant, taken by and large, but he, he did have a somewhat limited vocabulary. When we arrived in New York and I placed my charge in admirable quarters while we awaited the boat that was to take us home again to England. I, meanwhile, was enjoying the sights of your fine metropolis, little realizing the catastrophe that lay in store. And then, late one night, my slumber was disturbed by my agitated servant. Ah, Sahib, Sahib, ah, ah, leave the land of ah, dreams. Ah, Arise. Come awake. Oh, oh, oh. Sahib, there is news. News. Ganga Das? What is it? What? Ominous news, Sahib. Frightening news. Ganga Das, will you just tell me... The oh. elephant. Oh, yes, yes, the elephant. The sacred white elephant. Our elephant. Our, well, what about the elephant? The elephant is gone. Gone? Stolen. Oh, no, don't say that. I would say something else if that would make the Sahib happy. I rushed to the building where we had quartered the elephant, and there was a gaping hole in the back wall, as if somebody had broken through the bricks and masonry and thus been able to make away with the elephant. Oh, yes, the place was in ruins, and so was my career. I had failed. The fate of the Empire had been placed in my hands, and I had faltered. I could look forward only to ruin and disgrace. And then I remembered that I was in New York, where the head of the detective force was the celebrated Inspector Blunt. Oh, if anyone could save me, if anyone could restore that elephant... You realize, Major Smathers, the Herculean nature of this assignment? Oh, indeed, Inspector, I do. An elephant, especially a white elephant. One does not easily lay one's hands on a creature of this sort in New York. Oh, I realize this, Inspector. There are hundreds, virtually thousands of places where one could hide a white elephant. That is true. Why? If you weren't looking for him, you could pass him on the street and hardly notice him. Yes, of course, I appreciate the difficulty, but tell me, tell me that you will take the case. Inspector Blunt, you are my only hope. A stolen white elephant. Think of it. Trying to find a stolen white elephant. It's got looking for a needle in a haystack beat all hour. Major Smathers... I'm your man. Inspector Blunt. Oh, I tell you, he was a man to inspire confidence. He was a tall, thin man with a strong, compact frame. A person of no common order. Calm and in command. This is no ordinary case. Every step must be warily taken. Oh, yes, sir. And secrecy must be observed. Of course. Not just plain secrecy, but profound secrecy. Oh, I understand. Speak to no one. Not even to the reporters. I will handle the press personally. I will tell the fourth estate only what it will suit my ends to let them know. Now, the business. Systematically. For nothing can be accomplished in the detective business without strict and minute method. Oh, I'm sure I agree, Inspector. Now then, the name of the elephant? Ah, oh, his name, yes. Hassan bin Ali bin Selim Abdallah Mohammed Al Hamul Yamsachip Boyd Lut Sultan Abi Butfor. Does he have a nickname? Jumbo. Place of birth? Siam. Parents living or dead? Dead. I believe. In positive. Well, is it important? In fact, one must be thorough in these affairs. Now, can you describe this elephant? Oh, yes, of course. He was a white elephant. I'm afraid we must do better than that. Height? 90 feet. Length from apex of forehead to insertion of tail? 26 feet. 
Length of trunk? Uh, 16 feet. Length of tusks? Uh, nine and a half feet. Any distinguishing marks? Distinguishing marks? Well, now, it would seem to me that... My the... dear Major, this minute detail may be boring to you, but the fact is, the more closely we can describe the elephant, the easier he'll be to identify. <laughs> Well, I don't know about Marks, Inspector, but you might also add that he likes to squirt water on people. Uh, through his trunk, of course. Oh. Well, we'll be able to identify him now beyond the shadow of a doubt. Albert! Have 50,000 copies of this description printed at once and mailed to every detective office and pawn shop on a continent. Pawn shop, Inspector? A favorite destination for thieves with stolen merchandise. Ah! I hadn't thought of that. Now, it'll be necessary to offer a reward. Hmm. And what sum would you suggest, Inspector? To begin, $25,000. $25,000? Well, it's an intricate, difficult case. There are a thousand avenues of escape and unlimited opportunities of concealment. And these thieves have friends everywhere. These thieves? <laughs> then you, you do know who they are. Never mind about that. I may, I may not. It'll be necessary to describe this elephant further. Describe him further? I, I thought we'd given a fairly detailed... We haven't scratched the surface. If he has any peculiar eating habits, say, that'll make him easier to notice. What does he eat? What does he eat? Oh, for he, he eats anything. He must be more precise. Well, then, Inspector, he will eat a man. Yes. He will also eat a Bible. You can say he will eat anything between a man and the Bible. I'm afraid that's too general. Details are what are needed in our business. Now, as to men, how many men will he eat at one meal or one day if they're fresh? Well, he wouldn't care if they're fresh or not. At a single meal, he would eat five ordinary men. Five men. Here, let me write that down. What nationalities would he prefer? The rest of that is completely indifferent. So much for men. What else will he eat? Well, he would eat uh, bricks, bottles, clothing, um, cats, oysters, ham, sugar, pie, potatoes, hay, oats, uh, <laughs> everything really except boarding house rice pudding. Why does he drink? Anything that flows, milk, water, whiskey, molasses, it's no use to go into particulars. Whatever fluid occurs to you, just to set it down. Oh, of course, he, he will drink anything except European coffee. Thank you, Major. You have provided us with excellent clues. All right! Detail Detectives Jones, Davis, Halsey, Bates, and Hackett to shadow the elephant. And detail Detectives Moses, Bacon, Mikey, Rogers... Tupper, Higginbotham, and Bartholomew to shadow the thieves. The thieves? Ah, then you do know. Oh, this is uncanny. Alaric! Place detectives at all terminals and docks and all roadways leading out of the city to watch for the stolen white elephant. Dispatch detectives as far north as Canada, as far west as California, as far south as Florida. And remember, it must all be done with the utmost secrecy. That'll be all. Oh, Inspector Blunt, I marvel at how much ground you've covered in so short a time. Well, one does these things by instinct, Major Smathers. Yes. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. You must maintain secrecy. Ah, oh, of course. So far, no one knows of the theft except the thieves, your servants, yourself, and I, and my men. I shall see to it that my servants say nothing at all. Good. Inspector Bunt, you realize the international crisis that can be created if that elephant isn't found soon? Yes. Then, can you give me some hope? Major Smathers, I am not given to boasting. It is not my style. But we shall find your elephant. Very well. You heard all the details Inspector Blunt demanded. And what is genius but the capacity for taking infinite pains? 
and it's just as well. Because if you're looking for a stolen elephant in the city of New York, you certainly need a genius to find it for you. I expect to find you waiting here for me when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Poor Major Smathers of the British Army in India. He has been entrusted with a sacred white elephant to bring home as a gift to Queen Victoria. While stopping over in New York, the elephant has been stolen. But Smathers has every reason to be hopeful. After all, the search is in the reliable hands of Detective Inspector Blunt, than whom, well, let us pick up the Major's story. Awake, awake, Sahib. Uh, it is only I, thy servant, O protector of the poor. What? What? Does the heaven-born wish to read the newspaper? Oh, oh, it's you, Ganga Das. Oh, what a dream. What a dream. Inspector Blunt has sent them. Inspector Blunt? Who, 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 who is Inspector uh, Blunt? The police, Sahib. Oh, oh. Then it's no dream. It, it happened. The elephant has been stolen. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. And I did talk to the world's greatest detective, Inspector Blunt. If the center of the universe will deign to look, it is in all the newspapers. The new... Well, how could it be in the newspapers? Inspector Blunt said that it must be kept secret. It was the mighty police sahib himself. You see what it says in the papers? Let me, let me see. Inspector Blunt... Confident stolen white elephant will be recovered. Huh? Inspector Blunt expects immediate arrest. Blunt says international intrigue behind great white elephant theft. Blunt says elephant was stolen to effect succession of British throne. Oh, wait till I see that man. <laughs> Inspector, you said the papers must not be told. They must not be told unless they ask. And when they ask, they must be told. You understand? I... Uh, Detectives that? must keep on the good side of the newspapers. But why? My good fellow. Fame, fortune, reputation, constant public mention. These are a detective's bread and butter. He must publish his facts and his theories. Well, you know what will happen? No. It will be assumed that he has none. Therefore, we must publish our plans. We must show the public what we're doing, or they will assume we're doing nothing. Isn't it better to have a newspaper say, Inspector Blunt's extraordinary theory is as follows, than to have them print something harsh or sarcastic? Ah, yes, I see your point, of course, uh, but, for instance, in the Gazette you say that although the rear wall of the building was torn out and the only door was locked, you didn't believe that the thieves had removed the elephant through the open space, but they took him out through some, um, as yet, undiscovered outlet. Exactly. Well, then why did the thieves trouble to make the hole in the wall? To mislead me, but I'm too clever for them. Oh. Uh, but it also says in the papers that the $25,000 reward is only being offered to detectives. Is, is that quite correct? Oh, yes, indeed. But it would seem to me that the reward should be offered to anyone who would find the elephant. Ah, uh, yes. But it's the detectives who will find the elephant. Now, if some other people were to find him, it would only be because they were watching the detectives and taking advantage of the clues that they stole from the detectives. So you see, regardless of who finds the elephant, it's the detectives who deserve the credit and the reward. Ah, yes, of course, that does sound reasonable. Aha, first report coming in. Let's see, how one have we here? Ah, I've got a clue. Found succession of deep tracks across a farm. Shall follow them. Detective Darley, Flower Station, New York. I see. That's absolutely marvelous. Well, Darley's our best man. Your beast is as good as found. Uh-huh. Uh Just arrived at Barker, New Jersey. Glass factory broken into during night. 
have eyewitness reports of elephants. I'm staying with it. Detective Baker. One of my top people at Baker. Yes, but dear me, how could the elephant be in both New York and New Jersey? Be assured, Major, there is a rational explanation. Well, then, what is it? Uh, wait a minute, another telegram. Shadowed elephant tracks three miles. Large, deep, ragged they were. Met a farmer who says they're not elephant tracks at all, but holes where he dug up trees last year. Dolly, Detective Flower Station, New York. Well, now, how do you account for that? Well, this farmer, this alleged farmer, is obviously a confederate of the thieves. His purpose is to deceive Dolly. Alaric, send the following coded message to Dolly. Arrest the farmer and continue to follow the tracks to the Pacific if necessary. That, you see, the wires are humming. Coney Point, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Oh, yes, yes, this operation is national in scope. Uh, gas company office broken into during night and huge... Three months stack of unpaid gas bills taken. Looks good for our side. Murphy, detective. Good heavens, Major. Would he eat gas bills? Oh, yes. Gas bills, water bills, coal bills, grocery bills. The beast is omnivorous. Hey, Inspector Blunt. Oh, ho. Send her in. Wow, now progress indeed. I'm about to interview a special informant. Informant, Inspector? Yes. We have strings into the underworld. A job like this cannot be kept secret within the criminal fraternity. Major, you're about to witness the solution of the case. Oh, Lily, sit down. What do you want? You know what I want? Information. I don't know nothing. Now, Lily, this is no way to talk to an old friend. I Tell me about the elephant, Lily. The elephant? What elephant? You want to know about elephants? Go to the circus. Now, Lily, you have already made your ritual objections. Whatever that is, I didn't do it. I even got an alibi. So, let us get down to business. But I'm out of the business now, Inspector. So, so help me. I'm going straight. Who would steal an elephant? Are you kidding? Who would steal a white elephant? Oh, a white elephant. <laughs> you should have said so in the first place. A white elephant. I see uh, names on the tip of my tongue. Would it be by any chance Barge Criswell? Barge Criswell? Yeah, sure. It's got to be Barge. How do you know? How do I know? Oh, he's been all over town bragging about how he's done it. Is that a fact? Yeah. Everybody knows it's Barge. You sure? I swear to it on a stack of Bibles. Sounds too pat, Lily. You sure you're not making this up? Why would I make it up? Oh, come on. Have I ever given you a bum steer, Inspector? Why would Barge, Criswell, or anyone else steal a white elephant? That's what I asked him. Just the other night. I said to him, Barge, tell me. Now, why would you steal a white elephant? You know what he did? He just looked at me and he said, Why would I steal a white elephant? Because he's there. <laughs> Ah, that crazy barge, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Lily. That will be all. Uh, you don't want me to tell you nothing else, Inspector? You may go now. <laughs> Any time, Inspector. Goodbye. <laughs> don't take any wooden nickels, Inspector. <laughs> well, I tell you, Inspector, I mean it's nothing short of miraculous. If I hadn't witnessed it with my own eyes, I... I how you drew the information from her. Such subtlety, such skill. Routine in this profession, my dear Major. And what is your next move? Our next move is to apprehend the thieves and collect your elephant. Yes, but uh, where is he? Shouldn't it be obvious? Well, to a genius, yes. To me, no. He is here. Here? Right here. In New York City. New York. But the telegram... Cleverly arranged for by Criswell's crewman to throw us off the scent. The elephant's been here all the time. Ah, but, but where? In Criswell's apartment. In Criswell's ap 
Of course. And now we shall recover your beast, Major. You may wire your government, tell them the matter is settled, the case is closed. And now we move in for the kill. Alaric! I want 100 men armed to the teeth. We will surround the home of Barge Criswell. We will take him, dead or alive. I want to... May I come along, Inspector? Are you armed, Major? I have a revolver. Good. Uh, what was that? What was what? Well, that, that sound. What sound? Oh, I could have sworn that I heard the elephant. The elephant? Yes, the elephant. As if, as if he were... As if what? But as if he was somewhere in this very building. How could he be in this building? Somewhere deep in this building. You realize, of course, that that's impossible. Oh, but, but, but I'm so sure that I heard him. I... Oh, yes, yes, you probably did. After all, if I didn't know better, it would be possible to think that he could be here. <laughs> the place from which he was stolen was just down the street. Major, it's entirely possible that you did hear him. Is it? You heard him because you wanted to hear him. I don't understand. We're about to capture him. You are so filled with anticipation that in your mind, you can actually hear him. Ah, yes. That accounts for it. Well, shall we proceed? The sight of a task force of New York City detectives about to spring a trap on a band of desperate criminals is awesome indeed. As a military man, I had nothing but praise. In just a few hours, every detective was in his place. The house was surrounded. The neighborhood sealed off. And we were ready to move in for the kill. Be careful, Major. Keep under cover. But I intend to take an active part in this operation. Very well. What, Creswell? What? We know you're in there. The house is surrounded. There's no hope of escape. Barge, come out. He ain't here. A likely story. Barge, send out the elephant. What elephant? You know what elephant. Barge, send out the elephant. And then come out with all your men. Barge ain't here. The elephant ain't here. Ain't nobody here but me. Barge, I'll count to three. And if you're not out here by then, we'll come in and get you. One. But I tell you, Barge ain't here. Two. He ain't here. Barge, I said two. Barge ain't here. The elephant ain't here. Ain't nobody here but me. Very well, Barge. If you want to hide behind a woman's skirt, it won't help you. I'll count to three again. One, two, three. All right, man, let's rush the house. And so the assault is on. And a full-fledged battle it is, too, the sound of it. A dangerous business, this, being a detective, especially when the quest is for a sacred white elephant. Inspector Blunt has woven a tight tapestry of clues and deductions. Surely, success should crown his efforts at last. Well, wait for the third act, which I shall bring here in just a few moments. a white elephant in New York, especially when it's been stolen by a band of experienced, resourceful, and desperate thieves. Well, one turns the famous police inspector Blunt loose. One watches Blunt use all of his almost miraculous powers of deduction, and one sees him march inexorably to where his quarry is hidden. Casualties. Five men dead, Inspector. Oh, Inspector, how was that possible? 
We were the only ones who fired. No shots came from the house. Uh, being a detective is the most hazardous of all professions, Major. But uh, what do we do now? Man, cover me. I'm going to hear myself. And I shall go with you. Open up. Open the door. Or we shall break it down. Is your revolver loaded, Major? Yes, sir. Be ready for anything. What's all the noise about? Hi, right, where is he? Where is who? Ma'am, I advise you do not play the fool. Where is the elephant? How could I have an elephant in here? I ask the questions, madam. You furnish the answers. That is the nature of our relationship. Is that understood? Yeah. Now then, where is Barge Criswell? Barge Criswell? Where is he? You ought to know where he is. Madam, I warn you. He's dead. Your lies cannot save him. You're crazy. Barge Criswell's been dead these 15 years. Madam, I shall arrest you as a material witness. Barge was hanged. Yeah, hanged? You arrested him yourself. Here. I still keep the newspaper story. Yeah. You see? Barge Criswell Ang. Ah, uh, hand me that. Uh, brilliant detective work by Inspector Blunt led to the conviction and hanging of the notorious Barge Cri... Then it's true. He is dead. Even a detective would know that. But all the clues, all the clues led to... Uh, it had to be Criswell. Please, Inspector, don't be distressed. Major, you must admit the only reason Criswell is innocent of the crime is because he happens to be dead. Quite right, Inspector. Do you still have faith in me, Major? Oh, 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 oh. My faith is not some fair-weather trust to be dispelled by the first cloud. You don't know how much that means to me. I shall make the recovery of your white elephant my life's work. I will find him if it kills me. Perhaps we'd better double the reward. Consider it done, sir. I... What was that? Yes. Yes, I think I heard it. It sounded like the evidence. Ah. As, 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 as if he's right here. Right here. Our ears deceive us, Major. Well, but I could... I could have sworn I just heard... No, no, no. We want to hear him. Rest assured, we soon shall. I am now constructing an entirely new theory concerning the motives and modus operandi of the International Band of Elephant Thieves... Into a national. That was my fatal mistake. I was too, uh, parochial. Too limited in my quest. Yes, indeed. The insidious hand of a foreign power is very much in evidence. I have every faith, but you are correct, Inspector. Ah, but if I had faith, the same could not be said for the local and international press. Every day, new reports were received of elephant sightings and further stories of his wild depredations. The headlines would read, Harvest demolished, factories destroyed, death and devastation. Inspector Blunt has a new theory. Inspector Blunt has a newer theory. Inspector Blunt fooled again. I was so disturbed by all this, but... Uh, not the inspector. My dear Smathers, this is all deliberate on my part. I am spreading these stories to lull the thieves into thinking they're safe. Ah. To make them think they're dealing with an incompetent fool. Therefore, they shall become careless and make the fatal error that will seal their doom. Do you understand? Of course I understand. Ah. <laughs> the sheer brilliance of that strategy takes my breath away. 
It is merely standard detective procedure. But to allow yourself to be unfairly pictured and caricatured as a buffoon, one must play a hand one is dealt and hope for a vindication of history. In heaven's name, did you hear... Imagination. Sheer imagination. But I could have sworn it was the editor. Ah, pay no attention. Uh Aha. A message from Dolly. Hogan's Port, Ohio. Elephant passed through half hour ago, creating panic. Raids through streets. Killing two plumbers, a traveling salesman, and a sheriff. Ah. And this is from Gloversville, New York. Elephant broke up any temperance meeting here this evening, placing his trunk through the window, and he washed it out. Whole region in terror and pursuing him, signed Murphy. But, 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 but how could the elephant be in both Ohio and New York? Major, this is no ordinary elephant. And here we have no ordinary case. Oh, yes, that is true, I suppose. But... Why do I keep hearing the elephant so clearly? You mean, why do you think you hear him so clearly? Well, I wish that... Yes? Wish. What do you wish? I, I, uh, no, nothing, Inspector. No, I have faith in you. I shall have faith in you to the death. <laughs> the protector of the poor has a visitor. Oh, dear. Who, who is it, Gunga Das? A highly placed person. The British ambassador. And the what, what, what are you waiting for? Show him in. If the center of the universe will permit, I have never seen a more angry sahib in my entire unimportant existence. Oh, dear, but I can't help it, Gunga Das, so show him in. Rotten show, Smathers. Uh, it is indeed, Lord Charlie. No end of a flap, you know. I understand. Well, but where can the beggar be hiding? Well, that, that, that's the problem. The queen wants her elephant, dear boy, don't you know? Well, I'm sure she does. Every yeah. day she asks the PM, Mr. Gladstone, where's my elephant? I am sorry about that, sir. And, of course, all he can give her are excuses. And she looks at him and she says, Well, I'm sure dear Mr. Disraeli would have no trouble finding my elephant if he were prime minister. It's reached that point, sir. Oh, yes, government's about to fall any day. Where well, is that blooming elephant? Well, we, we, we are making progress. We? With Inspector Blunt and the New York police. Of course, fellas. Well, it's your show, but I've taken the liberty to sound out Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? He would be willing to take ship for New York and find the elephant within 48 hours. I see, sir. Am I being ordered to dismiss Inspector Blunt? And hire Mr. Sherlock Holmes. No, no, my boy. You are being advised. Ad- well, then I shall think it over. Oh, yes, I would do that. Because if the elephant is not found immediately, you shall be court-martialed, dismissed from the service, tried for treason, and either imprisoned or hanged. Is that clear? <laughs> I believe the reward should be higher. Well, it, it's 150000 now. Yes, well, the case is extremely complex. Well, whatever you think best, of course. Oh, no, Inspector Blunt. I could swear... <laughs> this may be the very news I've waited for. I'm on his track. He cannot be more than 15 minutes ahead of me. Detective Darley, Rosebush, Michigan. Inspector, don't you think that we should... This is it. Blue Cheese, Wisconsin. Elephant sighted in field two miles north. Signed, Detective Stump. Major, we've got him now. We've got him. Are you sure? Positive. He is now in the midst of my men. He and the miscreants who have abducted him. Go on, Major. Get some rest. You shall be notified as soon as he's been returned here. A wake, protector of the poor. Well, what's the matter? A message from the sahib of the police. News. What kind of news? Great news. Oh, yes? 
Hassan bin Ali bin Salim uh, Abdullah. This is all Ganga Das. What about Hassan bin Ali bin Salim Abdullah Muhammad Ed Hamali? He has been found. <laughs> Boys, quiet. It is now my pleasure to divide the $150,000 reward money among all fine men who crack this case. Hey, 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 Inspector, I, I came as quickly as I could. All right, quiet now, boys. Let's hear it for Major Smithers, who never lost faith. Hey, hey, hey. You, uh, you found him? Where is he? In a cellar. The cellar. The cellar of this building. But hurry. Oh, my stars. It is, it is Hassan bin Zidim. You want to know how we found him? Yes, oh, please. I revisited the scene of the crime, hoping, of course, that the burglars would do the same thing. They do that, you know. Hassan, ah, yes. Hassan. Sometimes they revisit the scene Hassan, of the crime. Hassan, say, say something. I noticed me. hairs on some of the broken bricks. And then in a sudden flash Hassan. of intuition, <laughs> I saw the whole thing. Hassan had broken Hassan. a wall Hassan. himself. Do you suppose he's asleep? No, he's not asleep. Oh. And then I noticed footprints in the ground. And Hassan. I followed those footprints. Well, why is he and... lying there so quietly? He's dead. Oh. The footprints led through the alleyway. Yes. Oh. And oh, there was a hole in the wall God. in the back of our oh, building. And he must have fallen through it down here to the basement, and he couldn't get out. Hassan dead? He, uh, died here of starvation. That poor beast. Hey, Inspector Blunt, I have here a telegram from Detective Doris from Monroe, Utah. Have four dolphins tracked. Ah, that Dolly. One of the finest minds on the force. Have a look. Have him return and get his share of the reward. Well, Major, we found him for you. Oh, yes, Inspector. <laughs> you found him. Well, sir, I don't care what anyone says. Oh, I may be a ruined man today and a homeless wanderer on the face of the earth. But my admiration for that detective, whom I believe to be the greatest genius the world has ever produced, remains undimmed. And both he and I shall be vindicated by history. <laughs> ends Mark Twain's story. And while the cynical may sneer, and the scoffers may doubt, who is to say what verdict shall be returned by history? Perhaps a greater plan, a mysterious design, did not wish for the elephant to reach the queen. Do we know? Of course not. But if this were the plan, could two better men than Major Smathers and Inspector Blunt been selected? I'll be back in just a moment. And what is the moral of our story? Mark Twain was not fond of pointing out morals. As a matter of fact, he said, persons attempting to find a motive in this narrative will be prosecuted. Persons attempting to find a plot in it will be banished. And persons attempting to find a moral will be shot. Well, nothing of the sort will ever happen to you if you join us here seven days each week. Our cast included Ian Martin, Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, and Peter Donald. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. <laughs> And now, a preview of our next tale. You're killing us! They will all be dead! Look! The earth is opening under their feet! They're going with... They're gone! The earth has swallowed them up. Oh, those poor people. Oh, don't weep for them. They're of no value. That's the history of the world, isn't it? Well... 
Good morning, Theodore. Oh. You startled me, Uncle Peter. Huh? <laughs> How could I startle anyone? Uh, I didn't see you coming. Were you busy with great thoughts? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was merely talking to this... Well, there was someone here just a moment ago. Oh, yes, yes, my boy. I know it affects me, too. I keep seeing people who aren't there myself. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Time Magazine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> 